tend to run on high emotion. Especially in Fortnite if you're playing with your friends. It's a networked game. Right? Especially if you're dominating. There is a direct correlation between me dominating and me talking trash. And me saying things over my headset that I would not say in person. Or I would not say if an adult were in the room. It's the same with any kind of, any kind of video game. Any kind of sort of a competitive element. So you have to understand when the environment changes, our thoughts can change. So we have to be really, really careful about what happens because each of these things causes problems. If you want to know what kids get in trouble for at Bellevue Christian most often, it's stuff like this. Fake accounts, anonymous accounts, group texts, things that run on high emotion and no face-to-face. So here's why I put fake accounts and anonymous accounts first, because there's no accountability. See, the environment is elusive because nobody knows who's involved. Group texts, group texts get out of hand really quickly. Why? Because it's not controlled necessarily by one or two people. It's a whole bunch of people. And this is the fear factor, if you're in a group chat, or group text, and you're not the one participating. The other five people. See, the Olsen kids have to turn their phones in at a certain time every night, but not all of their friends do. So they've had to get over the fear factor of, hey, you know what? I'm out. I'm, I'm going to bed. I'm not going to respond. Or my dad took my phone, because i got to get stuff done. So they've had to get over that. Because for some, the expectations and then the consequences of not responding are kind of negative. But you've got you to deal with that. And that's okay. But see, this all comes along with these things, and then emotions get high. Nobody thinks clearly when emotions run high. Okay? When you're super excited, you will agree to anything. Okay? When you're salty, everything is the worst. And then we tend to act that way. So we have to understand how environments change the way that we, we think. So what I'm saying is, you need to become aware of these things. You need to become aware of how these are playing out in your lives every day. Or, for example, not just here at school, but let's say, so I got my school friends here, and then I got my, my other group of friends that I hang with. Or, you know, I got my youth group friends that I hang with. Or I got my neighborhood friends that I, that I hang with. Different environments can mean different expectations, different sets of consequences. Now, look at this. Here's what we know. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. It's really clear. All of us are vulnerable. This is why your friends matter. That's why I went back to Lindsay. What are Lindsay's friends doing to her? They manipulate her to get what they want. Oh, your parents are gone? Oh, party at your house, yeah? They're not interested in, if she gets in trouble, that's on you. We just need a house. It's a beer money. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? It's a rhetorical question. No. At some point you play with fire, you're going to get burned. If you hang out with people who reward the wrong things with their attention, it is a matter of time before you are in deep trouble. Why? Because Proverbs 13, 12, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. You become like who you hang out with. Why? Because who you hang out with determines your environments, which determines your expectations. What they're the ones doling out the rewards and consequences and setting a precedent. This is true for everyone all the time. So the first step is, are you aware of it? And you have to understand that it's hard to think for yourself. How do you manage this? Well, thank you for asking. Here's some, what should I do? First thing I would do, you have to evaluate your influences. So which friends and environments most affect your thinking? I had a guy in, in, when I was growing up in, in junior high and high school, uh, I eventually, I just had to stop hanging out with him because when I was with him, pretty much all the bad stuff that I did as a teenager, I did with this guy. And the problem was not him. It was me. Because I kept 
hanging out with him when the evidence was so clear that I shouldn't. I was a fool when I was with him. And so consequently, what happened? I would have to lie to my parents about what we did. I took some unnecessary risks. Why? So that I could get acceptance from a guy who did not have my best interest in mind. And I just kept doing it over. I was Lindsay, is what I'm telling you. You want to know what I was like in high school around this guy? Lindsay. That, that was me. Now, other friends, other areas, other environments? Nope. But around this guy, his name was Dave. Well, still is. Uh, I, was a, I was a sheep. I would just roll over. So you have to evaluate that. Secondly, you have to be self-aware. Where and what are my vulnerabilities? Is it a desire for acceptance? Girls, are you, are you good around girls? But man, boys enter the room and you just check your brain at the door and like, <laughs> right? And just go along with whatever to get attention. Boys, are you, are you really nice? Are you really cool around certain friends? But then some other guys get, get around you and you start trying to talk all tough, right? You can always tell. You can always tell when a boy is trying to front when he starts swearing. Swearing is the dead giveaway of an insecure male. Because it's power talk. Okay? Whether you're typing it or saying it, whatever. You just see it. So you have to be self-aware because you have to understand your vulnerabilities so that you don't put yourself in that situation. Because that's what we do. That's what I did over and over. And finally, to choose wisdom. You have to minimize your risk factors. So for example, if there are certain social media apps or video games that bring out your worst, you got to get off. Don't try to use it better. You just have to opt out. Some of you might have to go, you know what, I can hang around with these people in these environments, but no, no other places. I just, I can't do it. You have to be self-aware and look at your own behavior and take responsibility for that. And the other thing you need to do is ask, as a friend, what am I celebrating? One of the big things I see at BCS is not that the majority of our students aren't, it's not like they're standing for bad things. I just don't know if they're standing for anything. We just kind of go with it. We just kind of roll. Are you a shepherd or are you a sheep? And you have to have the self-awareness to go, you know what? I might be a sheep or around this person or in these environments or with these people. I'm a sheep. So you have to minimize those risk factors. One of the reasons why we make the Olsen kids turn in their phones at night, because the later the day goes, the dumber we get. We I mean, think about it, when you're tired, you're kind of emotional. Do you think straight? I don't. So I just make it so that I, like, I protect myself from the send button. Okay. So you just have, there's a self-awareness. Why is it hard to think for yourself? Because you have to start with yourself. And to go with that. And make some hard choices sometimes. Or, and I'll finish with this. If you have some friends that are really good friends, they challenge you, they're willing to ask hard questions, and, and in their lives they're standing for the right things, man, you value those friendships and you be a kind of friend worthy of that kind of friend. And you tell people, thank you for being a good friend to me. And thank you for being a good friend to me when I'm not always easy to be friends with. You've really helped me. Show that kind of appreciation. Because a lot of leaders think they walk alone. And it's good to know that they have companions, okay? I'm just gonna pray to close, is that good? Do you guys have anything coming after this? You do? Okay, so I'll pray and then you, you come on up, okay. Lord, yeah. Oh, you wanna close in prayer? You wanna do it? You want me to do it? Caden, you wanna do it? Okay, we need to get Kay to Mike.
after after Caden prays, I'll give you lunch setup instructions. It's fourth period. Oh, that's right. Hey, I just work here. I don't actually know anything. All right. All right. Go for it, man. Please bow our heads as we pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for Mr. Olson's message and the time he took off to bring it to us. I pray we'll be able to apply this to our hearts and treat others how we would want to treat us. Let us spur one another toward good deeds and help each other when we notice that we are struggling. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.